So you really want to get started crankbait fishing. Well, everything you need to get started is right in front of me. You don't need much, but there are certain things that you have to have to be successful crankbait fishing. Now, getting started is a little different than being, like I said, advanced. You know, if someone wanted to start golfing, I wouldn't tell them to go and buy the most expensive set of golf clubs out there when they don't even know if they like it or not. But there are certain things that you really need to get to at least have a chance for success. And uh, like I said, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg for it, um, especially starting with the rods. Academy has a great deal on these all-star rods, these all-star classic rods, and they're about $49. And like I said, I'd rather, instead of you going buying a $200 rod for something that you don't even know if you're gonna like doing, or if you're gonna have any success with, I'd rather get you started with something cheap, but also will get the job done. Now, when you go, uh, and I'll leave a link in the uh, description for all these uh, rods, lures, string, and, and other things. But with these rods, what you want to do is you want to go to Academy or wherever you go, and you're going to get look look for these all-star rods, $49 a piece for the classics at least. And you're going to look for a probably about a seven-foot medium. I guess a medium action and a medium power or medium moderate is what they'd call it. And uh, actually, I want to see on here, it, it actually does say action moderate medium on the rod itself. And that's all you really need for, you need one of these. And you're going to also need a, a medium heavy moderate action rod. And if they don't have a classic in that variety, you can do like I go and go for a, go to their saltwater, um, what do you call it, the saltwater uh, category and get just a popping rod for like popping corks. It's gonna be a medium heavy uh, power and it's gonna have that real moderate tip at the end. Cause that's what they use on, on you know, popping corks and fishing for trout. You know, you don't want a real too stiff of a rod be, or not. You, you want some play in the tip to keep from uh, tearing the trout's mouth up. So pretty much you can get away with getting a popping, you know, popping cork series rod when you're looking for stuff for crankbaits. And the reason I go with two different kinds of rods are because the two crankbaits that you're most likely going to get started with are going to be square bills and like a smaller you know, eight to 10 foot range diver. And uh, pretty much stick to those for now. Okay. Cause like I said, and then like I said, later on you go into a little deeper divers and stuff like that. But uh, like I said, when you get down to it and you, you, you find out that you enjoy, you know, fishing crankbait, that's when I get my third rod, which is gonna be another medium heavy, uh, moderate action. And, and if you're already into it, you might look into getting one of those more expensive rods, those KVD rods that are glass composites, you know, a little fiberglass and, and, uh, and um, graphite together. And, uh, but uh, pretty much, like I said, you need two rods. And instead of getting, you know, one, you know, hundred and something dollar rod, I would like you to get two, you can get these two all-star rods for, like I said, about $50 a piece. And that'll get you taken care of with the rod. You can always upgrade rod later on. And by, by saving on the rods, it allows you to get the reels that you might need. If you don't have them already, what you're gonna look for in a reel is a, probably about a six, six to, six two to one or six five to one, something like that, uh, reel. Because we don't need a high speed reel with these crankbaits and you know, really the, the six are pretty common to find. I know everybody's going with these, you know, seven, seven something to one and eight something to one. Everybody's throwing out these high speed reels, but that's not what you're doing with crankbait fishing. And uh, so like I said, I think this, this Ardent Elite is a six to five to one and this uh, Karnak, uh, was it a 50, 51 MG? They don't, I don't know if they make these anymore. It's an old reel, but uh, this is a six, two to one. And that's all you really need. 
you know, the wider the spool, I hear the better. And, uh, but now, you know, a lot of the reels these days are going to these smaller compact reels. Um, and for the line, uh, what I put on my reels is K9 Fluoro, super strong. And that's what I would say to go ahead and get it. Go online, go to K9Fishing.com and you can order a 500 foot roll, a 14 pound test. Like I said, we're just starting out. We're going to keep it simple. You get this one roll and you can put it on both reels with no problem. Okay, a lot of people, like I said, if you don't like 14, you can go down to 10. But really, the 14 will kind of cover a little bit of everything, especially since we're dealing with square bills and regular crankbaits. You know, when you're throwing those square bills in there, you're, you're throwing in the nasty. So there's a better chance of getting into something. And also, you know, you're going to have a pretty good hook set to get them up over limbs and stuff like that. So you, you want a nice, little stronger line for that square bill. But just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna go ahead and with the 14 pound for both setups. Okay. And uh, also, if you're gonna fish any kind of fluoro, um, definitely gonna get some, some of this ardent line butter conditioner. Uh, this stuff is amazing. It comes to keeping your line, and you, you learn pretty quickly with that fluoro that it, uh, it's not the funnest to cast all the time. You know, it, it'll, it'll, uh, it has a lot of memory to it. This stuff will kind of soften it up, keep it, get that memory out of it, as well as keep it lubricated to allow it to cast easier. Um, and also back to this K9 fluoro strong, you know, super strong line here. This isn't a hundred percent fluorocarbon. I, I really do like this stuff because it has a lot less memory as fluoro as a hundred percent fluorocarbon, which is also a little bit more forgiving in my opinion. So if you're just getting started out, hey, this is another good stuff to go to. Like I said, less memory. It has a little, maybe a little bit more stretch to 100% fluorocarbon, but when you're fishing crankbaits, that stretch isn't that bad of a deal. You kind of want that extra stretch. Same thing with the moderate action tip. You know, you want that, that extra bend, that extra tip to, to allow the bass to get the bait completely in its mouth when it goes after it. So, and then I'll look at some of the baits. You know, I said that what we'll do is on this, the, the medium heavy uh, moderate action rod, that's going to be your square bill rod. Okay. So here's a, uh, here's an Academy, uh, you know, those H2O brand square bills. And I would suggest to go ahead and get a bunch of these, you know, these H2Os, they work well, they're fine. They've got our, you can get them with a rattle without a rattle. Um, and like I said, they're just good baits but they're half the price of these Strike Kings. And with the square bills, you're throwing them, throwing them in the nasty, so you're gonna lose them, you're gonna lose more. And it feels a lot better to lose a $3 lure than it does a $6 lure. So I would definitely suggest starting out to get you a bunch of these H2O, or you know, like I said, a, a cheaper brand square bill for learning, you know? So it gets, get a bunch of these, but pretty much every crankbait fisherman, in my opinion, needs to at least have three Strike King lures in their tackle box. Strike King is the, they're the standard when it comes to a lot of crankbaits. The, the three that I have to have in my tackle box is the red eye shed, I mean red eyed shed um, rattle trap, or not rattle trap, I guess you'd call it uh, a lipless crankbait. And uh, these things are amazing. The way they fall, the way they, the, you know, the action it, the sound, the way they cast, everything about this is, like I said, this is the gold standard. And it's the only, you know, I don't, I don't get too much crankbait, uh, you know, striking stuff, but their crankbaits are definitely a must have in every tackle box. The other one that you have to have from Strike King are these th 3XDs. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a smaller profile bait, but it, it does dive down to 10 to 12 feet. Usually you can, you know, so if any time I'm, I'm around eight feet deep, I'm gonna throw these. And when you're throwing crankbaits, you wanna kinda 
you want to throw a crankbait that can go deeper than what you're actually in. So like I said, if you're in eight feet, you want something that can run to about 10 feet, at least nine feet, you know, somewhere around there. And with using, I know we're using 14 pounds, so 14 pound will cause these crankbaits to not run as deep as, you know, it's probably what's listed on the box, 12 feet. It probably won't run 12 feet. But like I said, we're just going with the 14 pound to keep it simplistic. And, you know, just to get you started, get you out there. Um, I wanted to include this 6XD as well, because like I said, it's another one of those gold standard crankbaits that uh, Strike King makes. I wouldn't say to get one of these right now. I would hold off on these. Like I said, I don't know if you're, like I said, if you're just getting started, you know, you probably don't need to get down that deep on them. Like I said, these things can get down almost 20 feet. So like I said, I would kind of put this aside until you've gained a lot more confidence in your crankbaiting. Maybe that's when you get that third rod when you're ready to go with the 6XD. And uh, now with the, with the only thing I have a problem with with the Strike King is their hooks. I don't know if you can see this. I took this out the other day and I tore them up with it. And uh, you can see it's kind of a lighter wire hook compared to these, the, the, um, the H2O brand, you know, the, some of the other crankbait hooks that come with. So they're, they're lighter wire, and so they end up bending out a lot sooner. So eventually, you know, I say everybody needs to get one of these, but just expect to have to replace these hooks, um, you know, in, in the short future. Some people just buy them and change the hooks out right away, but like I said, you're starting out, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, if you're fishing tournaments, definitely. You know, definitely change those hooks out. But if you're just, like I said, just starting out, just learning, go ahead just with the, with the, the stock hooks. And uh, when, you are when you are ready to change hooks out, um, I would suggest getting some, uh, probably about size four treble hooks. Um, let's say, speaking of Strike King, you know, KVD, uh, you know, Kevin Van Dam's hooks. Those are pretty good hooks to replace with. And another little trick I do is I, I, I will replace these front hooks with red ones if you can. Get that red hook on there. And like I said, get, the, get your KVD size four for the uh, 3XDs and uh, size two for like I said, the 6XDs or, or anything around that range for the, uh, around close to the 6XDs, like your 5XDs and stuff like that. Um, same thing with the, uh, your red eyed shad. Um, like I said, they're, they're eventually going to bend out. That's just what they do. I mean, look at this one. This one's got a bent hook on it too. I need to change out right there. It's nice and bent. So I just, they're like, I said, they, they've used these, you know, thin wire hooks and they don't last. So that's the only downside to these, um, the strike kings. But man, I tell you what, they, the gold standard. Like I said, even if you're sponsored or something like that by another crankbait brand, you're, you better have some of these and some of these because like I said, they just work really, really well. Um, and if you notice, you might have noticed on, on my crankbaits, I, uh, I have taken off the little split ring here at the lip. That's because when you have a dedicated crankbait system, what I do is I don't, I don't tie directly to the bait. I use these double snaps. You can see that. I want to say these are probably size two double snaps. And you know, tie to this end. And it allows you to change crankbaits very quickly. You know, it's not a swivel, it's a double snap. And if you see the style, I like the style where you actually snap it in and it holds it in pretty tightly. There's not a bunch of moving pieces on it. It's just that right there. And so there's no swivel attached to it or anything like that. And it's small enough to where it's not gonna get in the way of your bill or your hooks. It's gonna keep it to where you're not getting tangled up on it all the time. But the reason I get these is that when you're crankbait fishing, 
a lot of times you're swapping out crankbaits. You're trying different colors. You're trying different depths. You're, you're, you're like I said, you're, you're moving around because when you get to crankbait fishing, you'll realize that a lot of times it's not that they're hitting crankbait. They're not hitting crankbaits. They're just not hitting the crankbait you're throwing. So you'll, you'll end up wanting to switch out crankbaits, you know, maybe throw a, a little John or something that doesn't, uh, like I said, doesn't go a deep, down as deep um, or, deep, or put something on that goes deeper. You know, different colors, um, you know, different styles. Like this, like this uh, um, lipless. The lipless, I'm gonna throw on the same rod as my square bill. So I'm gonna swap my square bill out for my lipless. Okay. And like I said, it makes it real easy to swap it out when all you need to do is snap that, that snap out, unhook your, 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 uh, crankbait and just slide this one on there just like that. Bam. And you're, you're, you know, lock it in place and you're tied on and you can see it's not going to be in the way. It's not big enough to really get in the way of the, 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 um, hooks or the lips. If you got it on a, uh, regular crankbait, but like I said, it's efficiency. It's going to get you changing quicker. It's going to, um, now I guess whenever it comes to getting snagged, you're going to have to tie on another double snap. Um, but like I said, to me, it's definitely worth it. It's a little trick that I do that I know a lot of people don't. Um, but, uh, like I said, that's, that's kind of my little pointer. Like I said, that might, might, uh, make it a little easier to transition to crankbait fishing. It might make it simpler on you instead of having to tie a bunch of, you know, polymer knots over and over again when you're switching. But, uh, I hope that helps. Um, if you got any other questions, just leave them in the comments. And, uh, like I said, I hope that gets you. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link on, of, of all this stuff that I've got here in my description to get you started. But like I said, start out with two rods, okay? Like I said, I'd rather you get two cheaper rods that can get the job done than get one one expensive rod that, uh, like I said, you're just not ready for. Or like I said, you don't even know if you like crankbait fishing, so don't you don't need to spend that much on the <laughs> on the rod. The reels, you know, if you got any leftover, put put as much to the reels as you can. You know, those are the things that you're going to swap out and use them in different places and stuff like that. Your rods, your rods are kind of more specific to what you're doing. You know, you're not going to use this rod to be flipping and pitching. You're going to buy that rod and it's going to be pretty much just for crankbait fishing. Uh, or like I said, something similar, you know, something with treble hooks. Because like I said, that's what you really need that moderate action for, something with treble hooks. So, like I said, I can, I'll use... I'll use this medium heavy one for maybe a, a, a whopper plopper, you know, or maybe something a little bit more with, like I said, got them treble hooks that you want to keep in contact with the fish's mouth. And so you don't lose so many of them. And after getting everything here, I would definitely suggest getting some rod sleeves. There's something about these crankbait setups that really get tangled with all your other rods if you have them in a rod locker or somewhere close together i think it's because it's like I said how flexible that tip is you know it, it's easy for the line to get pulled off the rod and then it gets wrapped around some other rods and it's just very frustrating so i would definitely suggest getting you some of these rod sleeves to go with it and like i said i'll leave a description on these uh, in the you know the, a link for these in the description as well but uh that's pretty much it once you get all of it Hey, you should be good to get started. But uh, like I said, if you got any questions, if I can help you anyway, just let me know. And uh, like I said, I'll leave as much information in the description as I can. And until next time, catch you later.